And now, everything that was wrong shall be made right. And it shall be made glorious! Hello, folks! Yes, I'm incognito a little bit. Oh, you can tell by my hoboing hat. And I see my nice, nice sweater, sweatshirt. Had for a long time. There we go. Ah, uh, uh, more comfy. Actually, you'll probably see me in this sweatshirt and my hobo shirt again. This. See, let me. So you can almost like see my eyes. There we go. That's a little bit better. So you can see me this coming Wednesday, New Year's Day, for all elite wrestling. But. In case you didn't see that thumbnail, I'm not here to talk about wrestling tonight, or today, or this morning, or in the future, or in the past. I'm right here in the present. Yes, I'm here to talk about Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, Star Wars 9. And I figured I would give my two cents in since... Everyone else did, and just to prove to you people out there, I went to the Cobb Theater, which, by the way, is an amazing theater. Um, I think I would take a date there just to see this particular movie again, but it would probably be on a Tuesday, because they have $5 movies on Tuesdays, which is pretty cool. Or maybe a matinee. No, I can't do a matinee because I work. This is Friday or Saturday. I don't know. I'll figure out something. But yes, so let's see here. Let me show you the doubting people out there. See this? The Star Wars 9 Cobb Daytona Luxury 12. And I went actually the day after Christmas. Uh, you can see date Thursday, the 26th, 2019, time 9 30. And it did cost a lot. It's not too bad. It's an amazing theater. Eleven fifty in tax. Twelve and a quarter is not too bad. What's up here? Here. What's on this part? So again, it's Cobb Luxury Twelve Star Wars Nine. One. I actually, you actually get assigned seats. So I just like to choose the aisle. So as an adult, because well, I think I'm an adult. I see it was F sixteen. And I got the ticket at like 351. Because I wanted to make sure I got my ticket. Um see so here, where to start? Uh before I'll be honest, I'll give full disclosure for a change. Or for a rare change. Well well now that everyone's seen this ticket again, you can see they, they, they kind of tell because they, they rip it. I don't know. It's it's just the old El Cheapo ticket, I guess. But well, that's good now. Now that I've proven to everyone that I've gone to see it, I probably did the cardinal sin. I listened to a bunch of reviews. I did not listen to anyone because I think they were full of garbage. Um, I saw the movie, and honestly, I thought it was good. It's not bad. It's not totally amazing. Here, let me make my quick list first. Numero uno Star Wars movie, Empire Strikes Back. And I'll fight you on that one. Empire Strikes. And I'll show you guys this list to, to prove a point. Empire Strikes Back. Numero uno movie. Number two, I'd have to say... The Force Awakens. So that was really good. Awakens. Three. In taking a, in context. The whole Star Wars. Universe. Rogue One. Rogue One was the most un-Star Wars, like Star Wars movie, but that was really darn good. 
Then let's see here. It would be four would be Revenge of the Sith. No wait. Yeah. The Revenge of the Sith. Mainly for the one aspect that it shows Darth Vader. And it kind of goes through the whole process of it. Revenge of the Sith. I would actually say this one Rise of Skywalker is number five. Yeah, five. Rise of Skywalker. And I'll, I'll give you my reasons behind that. Six. Was probably... I'll tell you what. I'm, I'm getting a lot of flack for this. Hans, the Han Solo. And the Han Solo movie was just fun. Seven would be Return of the Jedi. Oh, wow, that's pretty low. This is when Lucas, I think, started to cater to kids because he had all the Ewoks. Eight. I'll say I'll say the I'll say the original Star Wars. New Hope, because that kind of sets the stage for everything. Nine. Wait a second, am I missing one? Rogue One, Han Solo. Wow, I am. What was, um... Shoot, I'm going to have to redo this list. A New Hope. <laughs> um, oh, it was... Not The Force Awakens. Oh, shoot. Should I go back to my movie theater? I'll leave that blank. Ten was the Phantom Menace. And because Disney really started to get their hands into things. You can tell Jar Jar Binks. No. Menace. Now that makes sense now. Eleven. What the heck was that last movie? I have to go look this up. This is bugging me. I shall be right back, folks. That's what it was. I should have known that one. Oh, let's see here. There we go. Well, number nine is The Last Jedi. And then 11 is Attack of the Clones of the Clones. That's, that's not what it was. Yeah. Whatever it was, it was number two. And l l let me give my reasons. So here's my list. My official Star Wars list. You can start to yell at me. Empire Strikes Back 1, Force Awakens 2, Rogue One 3, Revenge of the Sith 4, 5, Rise of Skywalker, 6, Han Solo, 7, Return of the Jedi, 8, A New Hope, 9, The Last Jedi, 10, The Phantom Menace, uh, 11, Attack of the Clones. 
Um, I will fight anyone who says that Empire Strikes Back is not the best. That has everything. Force Awakens reintroduces us to the Star Wars universe. It was great. I enjoyed it. Rogue One was the not-for-kids Star Wars. And I thoroughly enjoyed that with, I think, the one exception of I could have drawn a better CG Princess Leia. I'll, I'll get into that, though. Revenge of the Sith, it sets the table for Anakin Skywalker, Luke, and Leia, and that whole process. The Rise of Skywalker was five, and I'll get into some detail about that. Han Solo was fun. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Six, Return of the Jedi. This is when Lucas tried to really cater to kids with the Ewoks. And I think there were some pretty significant changes between the what I saw and the director's cut. Uh, A New Hope. Honestly, and, and looking back at all the Star Wars movies, it's kind of corny. Um, it's literally like the beginning of a space opera. It's like space cowboys. Yeah. Uh, The Last Jedi honestly seemed to get a little bit long and it began to delve way too much into politics. Phantom Menace was good. It sets the table. But you have Jar Jar Binks and Disney really being heavy-handed in that. And then Attack of the Clones mainly because whoever directed that, I felt, decided to go all Shakespeare and give us lines that no one talks like. Um, what was that one line? Every day I'm without you. I feel like I'm dying. Like No, no, one, no one speaks like that. Unless you're in a Shakespeare play. Unless you're in a Shakespeare tragedy where everyone dies. But Attack of the Clones, I guess, was pretty close to it. Um, I think the one redeeming fact about Attack of the Clones that did have Anakin lose his uh, his hand or arm up to some certain point. And it kind of gives that foreshadowing uh, with Luke. Well, more so with him becoming Darth Vader and, of course, the future Luke Skywalker, how he loses his arm to, to Darth Vader. So, but enough about this. Let's focus on here, number five. The Rise of Skywalker. Overall, I thought, again, I thought it was a good movie. It's hard to say it's the worst one. It's not the best. It's kind of right there, right in the middle. I like my Star Wars fun and fluffy a little bit. There gets a point where it's not so much. Um, it starts off, for some reason, it started off really quick, too. I mean, normally goes. They did not have that, though. It just literally went. And they did the whole scroll, which I am still a huge fan of. That's my one one of um, three critiques that I did not like about Rogue One, even though it was amazingly excellent. They For Rogue One, they did not have a scroll-down thing. Two, the music was different. And three, Princess Leia looked like I drew her. I mean, don't get me wrong, what they did with, with Grand Moff and, and Peter Cushing. I thought they resurrected him from, like, dead. I'm like, what sort of necromancy is this? But they, that's where they spent their money for that film. Um, so, Rise of the Skywalker, if you haven't seen it, I probably won't be giving away major spoilers. 
But just know it's, it's my fifth best Star Wars movie. That's pretty good. I'll give it... Ooh, I'll, ooh, I know. I'll give it a cheeseburger rating. And if anyone knows my rating system, it's all based on yummy food. Toast is the worst on one end of the spectrum. And then the best, or toast, and then the best is going to be filet mignon. Everything else kind of fits in the middle. The cheeseburger is kind of right there at the middle. I'll say it's a cheeseburger, bacon cheeseburger probably. But it starts off as a typical scroll. Um, they're on a mission to get stuff from a spy. And I do like the fact that it was quick. But you do actually find out who the, the, the spider mole is. And you actually know his intentions and motivations. And they actually make sense. I'll tell you what. A lot of people said this movie doesn't make sense. The thing you have to take with a grain of salt with the rise of Skywalker is you kind of have to follow the whole Star Wars thing. Somewhere on that bookshelf over there is a bunch of Star Wars books. When I was in college, I had to fly home kind of for Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, because they actually closed, closed school then. And, and you couldn't stay. And I think for spring break. So for those... Yeah, then my parents would pick me up at the end. Did they? Yeah. I think so. Where did I fly home that last time? Maybe the first time I flew home, they picked me up sophomore, junior... Senior year, I had my job. Yeah, so I think they came to pick me up at the end. So, But I had to travel four times. I had to fly four times. Flying sucks. So I would always get a book, and I'd make sure I get my book ahead of time, and I figured, hey, it's Star Wars. It'll pass the flight. It's a, I think it was a quick like uh, hour flight, I think. At most two hours. But you had to wait in the airport and you just sit there and read books. So with The Rise of Skywalker, if you actually read through the books from Return of the Jedi on a little bit, you get a little bit better idea. That and I followed... And I'll, and I'll be honest, I, I followed Generation Tech. It's pretty cool. Watch Generation Tech. This is my free shout out to them. I hope I can do that. But so I followed the Star Wars. I enjoyed canon. I had all the figures. Or I had a whole bunch of figures. But then I would read the books. I f knew the lore to most to a, a pretty good considerable chunk of degree. That and I watched the cartoon, the CG cartoon. It was, um, yeah, I know who's in it, but the name, uh, 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 Star Wars Rebels. So I've seen that, so I know the lore, but this movie to me made sense. If you're just watching this video, if you're just watching this movie while only knowing of the eight other videos and uh, counting it, let's say you, you did see Rogue One and, and, and Solo, you do know a little bit, but parts of it are going to be missing. So it starts off, they have a spy, they have to get information from a spy. Um, the Millennium Falcon in theory can't light light speed skip, but Poe is an amazing pilot. And the, the Millennium Falcon always had those 
special modifications Han made to it. Again, if if, if you read the book, you'll you'll know about this. Uh, he had to like bribe people at spaceports because he didn't want them knowing like special modifications he made to it. That makes sense. Han Solo was a smuggler. So for the Millennium Falcon to have this to actually be able to do things that it shouldn't be able to do makes sense. If you're a smuggler, trust me, uh, bootleggers. They modified their car so they could be faster than the cop. That's that's basic American knowledge. Um, Shad from Shadowverse from Shadowversity. So Shad, hey Shad, um, he was really rough on this. But I think he mentioned it's like, oh yeah, well, Martin Falcon wasn't said in canon to have this, but if you read the books, you know that Han Solo had had to ditch out some money so that he could not get the Millennium Falcon inspected because it has, again, special amount of modifications. And it makes sense. Um, here in Florida, there was, for a time, if you're in Miami, they have the uh, drug-running cartel boats. And it's literally like a hull, a gas tank, and like four 300-horsepower engines. It's just meant to be fast. And there's a lot of modifications they made to do bad things and and hey that's that's the way smuggling works the same with bootleggers um i think there were tales in like world war ii of tank crews semi-modifying their tanks to their own personal tastes a little bit um but the, so yeah the millennium falcon can, can do things that it really shouldn't do again han solo probably tinkered with it and Poe Dameron's supposed to be an amazing pilot, so he probably could do stuff. Uh, so from there, they go back to the Rebel base, uh, Ray's still training. They do explain, I forget the right term, the duality of the Force. And if you watch the movie, it kind of makes sense. Because again, there's a scene she's training, she has the talking with uh, Kylo Ren. Um, also, Kylo Ren finds, again, you have to watch prior Rebels and know some of the lore of Star Wars. He goes to the Outer Rim, finds Emperor Palpatine. Again, the, the Force is, I don't want to say, oh, it's the Force, but in Legend and in the books, Emperor Palpatine actually did download it himself, which... The technology, again, the technology was available because they could do clones. Uh, and he did send out probes to the forbidden areas or unexplored space, whatever. I forget what it's called offhand. It's, it's, it's early in the morning and I've been up probably way too late. And I really, and I know I have to wake up early because I have so much stuff to do. But um, enough about that. So you have that. That going on, um, and then from there, it's just kind of the whole adventure. Now, now Ray's on a quest to find the Talacron so that she can find the Dark Emperor because the Emperor actually sent a message saying, "I'm coming." Hey, he's probably announcing saying, "Suckers!" Again, there, there. I understand it because there has to be some kind of evil villain hubris. It's like any other movie plot where the villain actually tells James Bond, oh, I'll, I'll tell you the whole thing. So, I, I kind of get that. Again, Shad really destroyed it there. I kind of get that a little bit. Um, then, of course, then they go to the One Desert Place, which was kind of cool for a festival. They have to find the one smuggler ship. Another thing that Shad said was terrible. It's like, well, why didn't I'll, anyone else I'll steal a ship? I don't know what it's like in, in Australia and New Zealand, but here in Florida, there are cars abandoned alongside the road all the time for whatever reason. So for a spaceship, which is like the equivalent of a car, it works. Um, a thing with the Force, Ray. Of course, Ray's been training. And 
oh, I hate to spoil this right now, but she's actually Palpatine's granddaughter. So that makes her probably very fort strong. And of course, the whole duality thing, forget the proper term. But so you have Ray here, Palpatine's daughter, Kylo Ren, actually the descendant of Skywalker. So it does make sense. Um, so again, they're they're in the thing, they're in the tunnel. I want to say in the Attack of the Clones, Anakin Skywalker actually calms the one beast down through the force. So it is a force power that we've seen. I don't think they, they just said he went through a bunch of training. Ray's been through a bunch of training. It would make sense. Um, there are instances of Jedi healing themselves through the force. Animal control and, and just saying, well, if... And probably tinkering... Because I know Shadow, he says in his magic systems, there's the, oh, where is it? Uh, in the Robert Jordan series, Wheel of Time, I think it's called. I'm looking at my books over there. I know they have to weave spells. And, and yes, he can kind of find, figure out what spells do through, through weaves and stuff. So it's not far-fetched to kind of tinker with things, especially with the Force, and especially with low-level organisms. I mean, it's not like she was doing open brain surgery, so you just had to heal some nasty gash on some animal thing. And again, spaceships are... If they're cars, cars are abandoned in Florida on the long side of the highway all the time. Then... Chewbacca's taken prisoner because they're wait, waiting for Ray. Try and wrap this up. Uh, quickly, maybe. So with that, he's taken away in transport. Again, knowing that, again, learning that Ray is actually a Palpatine. When she uses too much force energy, actually gets the lightning bolts and actually blows up a uh, transport. If you're going to exert so much power and you can actually do this physically, whereas if you think you really have to, and it's, and I've done it many times, if you're trying to take a bolt out and you're like, okay, this bolt is stuck. Let me put a little more pressure. Ooh, I felt that bolt nudge. All of a sudden, you know what? Let me do a little bit more. Crack! You break the bolt, you have to get the torch out, and your life sucks. So it is possible, again, kind of unconsciously, make the force lightning if you're really applying yourself. And, I, and I'll say that on the basis of taking out a bolt that's stuck there, bolts there. Yep, you have arm. Okay. Uh, ooh, I felt it. Maybe a little more pressure. Ooh, oh, wow. It's going to come out. It's going to come out. It's going to come out. Snap. Oh, crap. Torch the drill and pliers. The socks. Um, so, so I can see that. And then they have to go to Endor. Um, Probably the one prominent spot, again, the fallen Death Star is there. It's pretty cool how there's other stormtroopers that have a conscience. I do like that. Uh, they could have probably built that up a little bit more. Uh, TK-461. Again, that was Finn's number, I think. Yeah, whatever. TK-461. I don't know. TK-461 sounds familiar. But... So they could have built that up a little bit. Um, there are other stormtroopers that, that have abandoned their positions once they realize we're not killing innocent people. That's not what we signed up to do. And again, that is in various books where you do have people in the Empire that say, no, this, this isn't right. Um, also, you find out who the mole is. 
and, and the real simple motivation is that I just don't want to see him win. I just, I don't want to see Kyle run win. I don't care. I don't care if I don't care if if, if you win. I just want to see him lose. Makes sense because there were actually imperial officers that would routinely kill one another uh, for lack of better better statements. Um, they would be very devious and conniving in order to advance. So that's not heard of. Uh, the one because he was demoted the other general who you actually see later in the movie Yes, my emperor, I serve you as a part of the Galactic Empire. It's my, it's, I, I find it my my honor to to serve you in the final order. Makes sense. I uh, wasn't that too far removed. Uh, so they do that. They, they find the way. Ray has a hint. Of turning to the dark side and going to see and going the path of Luke Skywalker, and just saying, I'm, "I'm done with this pile of garbage. I'm gonna go hide, be a hermit." Luke's like, "I did that. I was wrong." The Force Ghost is pretty cool. Uh, Kylo Ren has a vision of his father Han Solo. That's when Kylo goes back to the light side of the Force. Again, there's always a little good in these characters. Uh, he threw away his his dark lightsaber. It's pretty cool. They find, uh, actually, yeah, Ren finds Ren gets is given Leia's lightsaber because they they talk about the training about that. So they do. So it makes sense. It kind of ties things a little bit. And from the Last Jedi, where like, how can Leia do all this stuff? It's like, oh, she Luke actually did train her a bit. That was good. Uh, Force Ghost can have interaction. I think that was in another book, I think. So that's not too far fetched. Again, if you. It's one of those things you had to do the research for. Yeah, it's kind of boring. But still, it was pretty good. Um, I think. So, so then, to wrap up, they eventually get find the channel. They attack the final order. And the attack makes sense because it was supposed to be a ground-based attack. And the only they didn't have the speeders available, so they had, of course, the horses from the stormtroopers. So while in atmosphere, the Star Destroyers were still in atmosphere, I guess they could still breathe, I guess. So it made sense because they had to transfer the uh, nav control from the ground. Because, again, that made sense. They said, oh, well, they're going to attack that. Well, we'll switch it to the Star Destroyer. So, so that, again, made sense. We're like, well... Going from down here, we still have our troops. We'll just do this. Hey, military plans change all the time. Uh, nothing survives. Uh, I think Mike Tyson said best when no fight survives after the first. No, no fight plan survives after the first punch. After the first time you're, you're punched in the face, your whole plan goes poof. So that, that that's true. I think I think Sun Tzu writes about that too. So, with that, uh, so there's a fight, first big space fight, then there's you have the Emperor Palpatine confronts Rey, confronts Kylo Ren, who's, who's now Ben Solo, cause now, cause, and the whole idea that the, all the past Sith are there, I think they're there kind of as like stone statues, because either that or, or, or they're like all forest ghosts or something like that. All Sith ghosts, their dark hood. Um, Ray eventually hears the voice, and we hear Yoda. Powerful are you with the Force? The Force is my ally. Powerful am I? So it's good. It was cool to hear Yoda's, Yoda's voice. Um, and then uh, Ren overcomes the Emperor. Yeah, because uh, Emperor takes takes kind of both Ren and Ben Solo's life force, leaves him kind of beat up. Uh, she absorbs it. 
Although she spends all her force energy, it's like Leia spent all her force energy trying to change Ben Solo back to good Ben Solo. Changing Kylo Ren to uh, Ben. And then Ben Solo comes out. He's strained. Ray, after defeating Palpatine's all drained. Ben gives whatever last force power he has to Ray. Ben Solo dies. Kind of sad. They like do. Which is kind of. Which is, I'm like, whoa. And then there was like a whole weird thing where Finn wanted to tell Ray something. That's weird. That was kind of. Why is this going on? Like, this strange threesome. That's not very Disney like. Neither was a lesbian kiss, either, by the way. And Chewbacca did eventually get his medal. Hooray for Chewbacca. Because if, um, and I'll get into that next. But then she goes back, uh, Ray goes back to Tatooine, finds the Skywalker place, uh, buries Luke and Leia's lightsabers in the sand. Someone comes up and says, Oh, what's your name? It's like, Oh, it's, uh, Skywalker. After she sees Luke and Leia's ghost, which is kind of important because when they were in the desert in the fair, some little thing, Oh, well, what's your family name? She's like, I don't have one. But so it was good. Um, my one major critique, and I've heard this a couple times, didn't seem long. It was about two hours, which is about the right time for a Star Wars movie. A little bit over two hours. I think maybe I might have been confused because I, I think I just had to go to the bathroom, like literally at the end, and I'm like, I'll just hold it. And I got home and purged my system. But I think the only other major critique... Oh, I do like the side story of Poe Dameron was a spice smuggler. And that's how he became such a good pilot. It was a little little interaction with that there. So that was good. So that, that might set up something. Again, very Han Solo-esque. Solo was a smuggler. Uh, Poe Dameron used to be a smuggler. Kind of got a little bit of his backstory in. Oh, and the droid part was, was perfect. And it makes sense. Uh, Shad did say that, oh, well, if he's a droid, he should be able just to translate that. Uh, if you watch the movie and pay attention, there was actually a Senate order that somehow in all droid programming for the Republic said that they can, they're actually banned from speaking it per Senate order. Which is built into the programming, which makes sense. So again, if you pay attention to the movie, you pick up on little things like that. Um, that was pretty cool, and that was awesome. They hacked into C three PO. That was fun. <laughs> and then, again, the only other critique I have that knocked it down to prime number five on my list is the fact that they really reused every other major sequence in all the Star Wars movies. I thought it was neat because I could say, oh, I remember that from this movie. Other people said, they're just rehashing stuff. This isn't anything original. It's the ninth sequel. How original can you get? So again, I, I give this movie a solid cheeseburger rating. And honestly, if I had a date, I would go see it again. I'm probably not paying 12 bucks for it, though. I might take him to the cheaper cinema and see it at 10 on a weekday or take it to the fancy cinema on a Tuesday and see it for 5. So it's definitely a movie, ladies, that I would take a day to, though. I would have no problem kind of explaining stuff to people. And that was the Star Wars episode... 
9. The Rise of Skywalker. I'm kind of looking forward to see how they move from here. I kind of hope, and they'd have to really be careful how they did this. I've heard good things about The Mandalorian. They can make that into a standalone movie. Kind of what they did back in the day with Firefly and the movie Serenity. If they did it right. I know Disney's being a bunch of wankers because they're saying, oh, you can't use Baby Yoda and your silly meme. Boo, Disney. So again, they can make a standalone Mandalorian movie probably about two years from now. In about ten more years, they'll have episode ten and it would probably focus probably on Poe Dameron a little bit more. Uh, Finn, maybe there's some like weird... I know there's the... Um, oh, I'm going to say this wrong. The, 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 the Usain... U Usandar. When they invade that. Because now that they know of the... Of the Galactic Republic. So we'll see what happens there. Again, you can leave a comment about this video. Um, always like, share, comment, subscribe. You can leave me an email at hobomu at, and girlfriend at gmail.com. I'll put that information up at the end. Um, feel free to disagree with me. Um, I know I've mentioned a couple. I do want to give shout outs. Shout from Shoutiversary. Versity, I'm sorry. Shoutiversary. Shadowversity. Part. Like university except for Shad. Yes, you got your shout out. Even though I do disagree with you on some points, I do find you very entertaining. And go check out Generation Tech. So I should probably email them and say, hey, I gave you a shout out on my YouTube channel. Are, are you cool with that? I hope so. Hobby bad for life. No, we'll see. Well, everyone have a good morning, I guess. Bye.